And now for the Rude Boys rant. Dirty immigrant. The scholar. Good boys. You know what I mean? The tig of tig. Yes, sir. There it is. Oh, man. I'll be honest with you. We're going to be jumping around today. Didn't think Not of like anything. We haven't done thing. that before. Yeah, you know what I mean? Nothing specific upon the scene yeah. and ting. You know, yeah. just a little bit of ting going on and ting and ting, you know? You know? Say yeah. ting one more time. <laughs> <laughs> immigration sweep. No immigration sweep. Attack on Iraq or Iran or whatever, yeah, or yeah. Iran or whatever they say, no attack on Iran. Uh, straight pipe parade, don't know when that's coming. <laughs> that's called every day, folks. Get over You yourselves. know what I mean? Rudy's tuning in. What's up, Rudy? Rudy Ga! Walk one, star, walk one, you know? So, you know, the first time you told me that's the, what, what city was it that wanted to do it? Oh, I don't remember what city uh, at all. I think it was Boston or somebody. Somebody, yeah. anyway, somebody who said, "Oh, well, we need to have a straight pride parade." I started laughing yeah, so hard. Yeah, like, Come, on, man. Come on, Come man. You know what's called a straight pride? You get to you walk down the street holding the hands. You know, if you're a guy holding hands with your woman, and nobody goes, "Yeah, Ew. stop if holding hands." If you're a woman holding hands with your man, there you go. There's you your know? straight pride oh, parade. Shut up. That's a cute couple. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? The thing, but, but, but it, it's just for you. Hi, you, Mom. Hi, Dad. Have you, ever no- <laughs> <laughs> have you ever noticed whenever somebody do something, somebody come with a counter? Mm-hmm. It's kind of like uh, you have the gay pride parade. Now we have the street pride parade. I can't even get the, get the you, words you, up from you, you and I were talking about this earlier. What would Okay. Gay, <coughs> the, gay, the gay pride, they, they obviously have the, the rainbow flag, yeah. right? What would it? What would it be for for straight people? Camouflage. I was gonna say I loved your suggestion. Yeah, with that. Camouflage, camouflage. You know yeah. what I mean? Because we're warriors. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, I was gonna say, is there a color for breeders? Then <laughs> 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 then you have over it, people. you have Black Lives Matter. Then you have All Lives Matter. You know what I mean? Yeah. You have Black Power. Then you have White Power. You know, how come we never hear Asian power or Arabic power or because Native American power? The, they're just sneaking in the background. They're letting us fight it out. While they take over the oh, world? There we go. And you that's keep, what they you keep talking about how China's going here you know and going what I mean? there and going yeah. there. Hey. We're, we're, we're all fighting like crazy about, yeah. you know, hey, you want to have your gay pride? I want to have my straight pride. And meanwhile, yeah. they're going... Oh. We just bought that business. You know what I mean? We just built them a, a, a port. Oh, they can't pay? We're going to take it. They did yeah. that to Nigeria. You know what there I mean? Like, uh, they, 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 they also helped just build another port in another African country. And my uh, my uh, caption was like, hmm, something else they'll own soon. Because I know they ain't <laughs> got the way to pay them for nothing. You know what I mean? But, yeah, every time somebody says something, it does always have to be an antithesis to it. Yeah. You yeah. know, if I say peace and love, they're going to go, well, uh, hate and war. You know what I mean? Or or at least the you're you're weak. Yeah, yeah, you're such a wimp. You want to love somebody? That is so wrong. You know what I mean? But but yeah, when I heard the the the, the straight pride thing, it cracks me up. (laughs) You know what I mean? Uh, Yeah, it's funny because what are you gonna say in a straight pride period except hate? I. No, the question is, I have never actually witnessed or watched or attended a gay pride parade. I haven't either. I wonder if they do hatred stuff and they like they hate breeders and stuff like that. <laughs> I, I have no idea. I have no idea. You know what I'm saying, and thing. Uh, no, are, are they going to are they going to be talking about how much? Uh, well, the one thing they have in common, the one thing I think they're going to have in common is. Uh, <laughs> oh <gonna> no. Have, <laughs> Here it comes. The one thing they're going to have in common is uh, going after virgins. <laughs> Good night, everybody. We're going to go ahead and shut this thing off and get back well, to music. No, so. We kind of talked about it last week. You know what I mean? <laughs> it was it oh, a couple of weeks ago? I mean, it's the same thing. You know what I mean? They want to go after straight people to make them, you know, one of them. And then we have straight men who wants to go after women who haven't, you know. 
<laughs> I just don't know what to say to that. Well, you know? Know, hey, you know, we're yeah. looking for common ground here. <laughs> See, we all agree on something. You know, we just gotta figure you know. out what it is. <laughs> we just have to switch it to to the point where it's common ground for the betterment of everybody, and not for the, the conquering of of, of poor souls. Yeah, you know, I was say, <laughs> my, they might think it's for the betterment. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, it's only a two-second betterment. That was your it's not a, it's not a last <laughs> Yeah, no, that's the most selfish thing I've ever, Should I've ever we come to. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, we got to laugh at this whole situation at oh some point. God. But, but you know, on a serious note, I, I have never, I, I have, I've never attended a, a gay pride parade. I'll be honest. And I definitely okay, so ain't on, gonna attend on. no street pride parade. Yeah. Okay. So hang on. So obviously, um, okay. If you're against gays, homophobe, you know, whatever. So if we say we're against a straight pride parade, does that mean we're heterophobo, heterophobic, <laughs> <laughs> or anti-hetero, he- he- hedrophobe? <laughs> Because we don't think you should have a parade. Yeah, you know that's hedrophobe. <laughs> you know what? Though I, I still let them have the parade. I'm not. I just think it's you a know? dumb idea. Yeah, but you know, they, they think the gay pride parade is the dumb idea. You know what I mean? So you know, have your parade. You know what I mean? Well, and this is a straight person saying that he thinks a straight pride parade is a stupid yeah. idea. Yeah. Yeah. You know, let like them I said, do it. Dick, you can walk down the street every day and just. No, I know. I know. During the gay pride parade in Michigan, a bunch of uh, alt right uh, people marched in. I wonder what's going to happen if at the street pride parade a bunch of gay people <laughs> marched in. What? <laughs> what's going to happen there? <laughs> the rainbow flag comes flying in. I I no, they, they'd be surprised because some of the breeders might go. Well, here comes my people. <laughs> Join, come walk with me. You know me. what I mean. <laughs> We're buddies. Come walk. People, people are people are funny, man. You know what I mean. Really no, no, are. no, no. The one thing I haven't noticed, I don't know. This might be okay. You have those uh those groups that try to make gay people straight. Mm-hmm. You know the, the conversion therapy. Yeah. I wonder if the gay people have con- conversion therapy too, where uh, straight people go there and they try to. Oh, it's. <laughs> I ain't even gonna say it. I ain't even gonna say it. <laughs> That's probably a good idea. Because I got a bad thought, too. But. Because we've heard it before. You heard it before. Uh-huh. Sure have. So, That's so. why it's probably just... <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Changing time well, the subject. But, uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Uh I don't know, man. I I just think the whole thing is a uh, is quite funny, especially because I'm so down the middle. It's like, you know, just like we said, well, what just like you said, I'm like, well, I haven't attended a gay pride parade, and I'm not gonna go attend a straight pride parade. Yeah, parades. yeah, <laughs> whatever. No, no, no. Here's the thing. Uh, okay, uh, I have attended a lot of what we call demonstration or protests in the mm-hmm. day, but. I, they never really, some did, and I admit some did, but most of them never turned out into violence. Mm. There was never riot police and stuff coming there, you know what I mean, or, or people on the other side, because, number one, when I was growing up, nobody had guns, guns all over the place, so you know what like I mean? in this country, no matter what it is, you have to have the riot police there, because we have too many idiots in this country that can't just let it go. Yeah. You know? You know what I mean? It's like, oh, hey, you know, I could walk along the street and there could be a gay pride parade and they're prancing and dancing and that's their thing. I'm not yeah. going to go, oh, stop. You know what I mean? Yeah, but see, that makes you a human being. Yeah. There are too many others walking around who haven't quite realized the human being thing and they see it and go, ugh, yeah. I got to stop this now. Yeah. You know. One of our chairs just... Oh, I thought there was somebody screaming. <laughs> I said, what? It was, it, it, was, it was definitely one of our chairs because I kind of yeah. heard it behind me there. Yeah, I was like, man, we have a crazy, haunted. we having a crazy pride parade. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Go- ghost pride parade. Uh, 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 you know what I mean? I was just politically incorrect. They uh, can't make fun oh, yeah, of it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. You know, I do apologize. <laughs> and then he laughs. <laughs> No, 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 no. Your political correctness, man. 
I don't totally quite understand. Well, yeah, I do understand. I, I ain't gonna lie. I, I kind of, you know, I'm folding like I'm getting defensive. No, I'm not. This is just comfortable. But <laughs> <laughs> there, well, there are some points where it can obviously go too far. Yeah. There are some where it's definitely warranted. Yeah. As far as not saying the politically incorrect thing. Yeah. But and I and but I do believe there are those that can take it too far. Yeah. You know, to where it's. I, I don't know. And the whole freedom of speech thing. Yeah, you got freedom of speech without the government telling you you have freedom of speech. You can say what you want. Well, the government right now is trying to tell us what to say and that uh, everything that comes out of our mouths that's against them is fake news. So, and no, I'm not just saying the Republicans because uh, oh, yeah. the Democrats are into I've it. I've seen too. them say fake news oh, too. Oh, yeah. Every, everybody's running with it. Oh, you said something against me. Fake news. Yeah. I don't care how many facts you have. Fake news because I don't like what you're saying. Well, and okay, you and I were talking about this earlier too. As far as when somebody wants to—that's depressing. Yeah, when somebody wants to talk about something or someone that they don't like, what is the immediate thing that they do? You know, they have to find okay. For me to make a comparison here, that's going to get everybody onto my side. What is the what is the worst and most evil thing I can do? Ah. We don't like that person, so they're Hitler. Yeah. We don't like how they're doing this, so that's like what they did in the Holocaust. That's yeah. Like the, the concentration, you know, concentration camp. camps during World War II. They love to go to what is in our most recent memory the most purest form of evil on an enormous scale and go, yeah, you're doing the same thing. And, you know... Look, I understand that sometimes some of the things that they say, it's, you know, um, okay, whatever you might be arguing about, yes, this could be a bad thing, and we probably have to put a stop to it. But to compare it to millions who were slaughtered because, oh, you're that kind, I don't like you. Well, first of all, forcibly moved, some worked to death, some just gassed, some just lit on fire, some just shot, some just, you know, whatever. Just because it's, ah, you're one of them. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's... That's like somebody who is working, like, a minimum wage job saying they feel like, uh, like you know, the slaves back in the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, man, now I know how a slave on a plantation felt. Really? Yeah. Really? Are you serious right now? That's like those... Were, were, were you brought over on a ship? Yeah. That, that's kind of like those ultra liberals saying, well, you know, we understand all black people. <laughs> I'm as white as white can be, but I understand the black struggle. Brother, you know, okay, okay. This is, I, I, I had that post on Facebook. I, I did a little experiment. Yeah. And I saw an argument going on. It was liberals and conservatives, and they were going at each other right. over racism. Okay. And one side is saying the black man has been oppressed. You know what I mean? It's painful. You know, and it's like they feel it in their soul. You yeah. know, and of course the other side is going, oh no, they complain too much. They snowflakes. They this, they that, they the other. And I looked through it, and no offense meant, of course, it was all white people. So I was like, let me comment and see what happens. Yeah. So I commented, you know, I said something kind of logical about it, about yeah. human beings and all of that. They totally ignored me. Well, yeah, because you, totally you, you can't me. tell a white liberal that, that, that you know better than them about <laughs> something that you actually know better than them. What? Are you kidding me? I've noticed that. Uh, I've, I've noticed that. on one end, liberals are telling me how it is to be black. And on the other end, conservatives are telling me how it is to be immigrant. <laughs> Forget that I'm both. <laughs> I read the books on it, so I should You know, know. what I mean? Yeah, you know? Uh, well, CNN said, you know, well, Fox said, you know what I mean? And you're going, and I'm living it. You know what I mean, the thing? Yeah. And they're going, ah, You know, I, I, hey, I'm not saying that in some cases, oh, no, that's, there are absolute cases where white people have been, you know, but you see, I've been oppressed. Yeah. yeah. But let's look who, let's look at who is in charge. <laughs> so you gotta ask yourself who is oppressing you. You understand? Like somebody was saying that to me the other day. I said, "Well, you know what? 
Let's look. Okay, I want to go from an international perspective, you know, All because right. that's what I understand more than I do here. Yeah. Let's say in Europe, they're saying that the Caucasian males are most oppressive, oppressed. Okay. You know, because you have all these uh, immigrants come in and Africans and stuff like that. But then who is in charge of all the nuclear weapons and stuff? How are you going to be oppressed and you're the ones with the finger on the button? <laughs> well, it's like we've said before everybody wants to be no I'm not saying it doesn't happen individually yeah, yeah yeah but don't tell me a whole group of people is being oppressed when you have all the power mm -hmm. so then then that's when we go so who is really oppressing who yeah obviously we have an elite class yeah. uh, which is uh, I don't want to use that word we have a, a, a an upper class mm -hmm. that's oppressing a lower class yes. and they don't care what color you are no 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 they're going to ride color, you to the bank the only color they care about is the one that's on his shirt you know what i mean Green. well i don't know uh, maybe where i'm from it's red because the money's different color <laughs> <laughs> well, in this country, anyway, that's the only one they care about. Yeah, we it's call the it green, right? We there. call it red bread back yeah. home. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. And of course, you know, certain countries is multicolored. Yeah, rainbow, <laughs> if you will. Oh man, I, I, I wonder if like one of those like ultra straight people are gonna say, "I am not spending this money. It's the rainbow." <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any normal money? You know what I mean? Do you have any <laughs> normal money? Do you have green camouflage? Yeah. There we go. There we go. There's their color. There we but, go. But uh, you know what I mean? And it's like, dude, you know, if you're poor, you're going to get oppressed. It doesn't mm. matter what color you are. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, one of the tricks around the world that they use, like, for instance, you got Russia on the mix, right? Mm. Russia is turning Arabs against Arabs. They turn in South Americans against South Americans. They turn in, you know, Africans against Africans. And they're using politics and they're using religion. And money. money and we're fighting and against each fair, other. Yeah. And we're fighting for the crumbs. Hmm? That's all we're getting, man. You know, it's the crumbs, you know. I, I look at a lot of people like, they're like, uh, well, you guys don't do that here. But like uh, on the islands, since we don't have fancy smancy dog food, <laughs> you know we don't use Purina and you know ooh la la and all that fancy you smancy fun stuff. Of what I feed my dog? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Dogs eat what we eat, so the dog is sitting there with his tongue hanging out his yeah, mouth. Okay, you know, here's a little difference. <laughs> what you eat kept you skinny, so. You handing a dog a piece of chicken, piece of fruit, whatever, no big deal. Yeah. Us handing a dog a Cheeto, you know. Or a cheeseburger for yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or, you know, just all of the crap that we eat, not necessarily a good thing. So. I wonder if there's any vegan dogs. <laughs> I'm sure if their owners want them to be, I bet they are. <laughs> They're probably nothing but skin and bone. But <laughs> what are you trying to see? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, oppression is just man. If you're poor, mm -hmm. if you and poor means working class anymore. Yeah, yeah. You know, and 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 lower middle class, and probably middle middle class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're gonna get oppressed. Yeah. That's just that's, you well, look around and, the world. Well, that's the way it, it is. Even for those who are at a level where, okay, money's not really a concern. Yeah. In a way, you can almost even say they're still being stepped on a little bit by the ones who are way up here. Yeah. Because all they see is what those who have way up there going. I want that. Yeah. They just went and bought a hundred foot boat. I want to buy a hundred foot boat, but I can't. You know. I don't. You know. And. We celebrate excess, and I was at, I was at the rec center today, and on NBC was there a horse race today? Maybe I don't really pay attention to that. Was there people inform the rules? Was there wise? a horse race today? Because anyway, they were they were at might be the Preakness because I think the Belmont and yeah. whatever I don't know. But anyway, they were they were there at this thing, so they've got everybody in their little fancy hats, you know, showing. Is that Stephanie Gessel on there? Yeah. Saying hi. Hey, Stephanie. Um, but, oh, there's nothing else there yet. 
I I can see it. There's nothing else. Hey, there. Stephanie. <laughs> but um, Stephanie, a rebel. But uh, <laughs> um, but they've got everybody in their fancy hats, and so they're showing them all just they're having so much fun. All I these know rich people. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, your hats look ridiculous. Are those, are, are those oh, keeping up with the Joneses, fanta- people? Yeah, look how fantastic we look, and look at all of this. Um, you know, I did. I even the reporters who were there were dressed up and looking yeah. ridiculous. I'm sorry, but you know, and they're showing. Oh, look at these fancy drinks that we have that we can mix up that we have here. Oh, doesn't this look fantastic? I'm like, again, we are just celebrating excess yeah you, you, you know, know? Let me, what, let me what, ask what you is this, what though? is the quickest way to make somebody a celebrity be stinking rich and do something stupid we'll celebrate you we'll put you all over tv we'll put you all over the internet you'll get a million followers instantly on twitter and instagram and whatever else people will follow everything that comes out of your mouth you know I don't know, and all, 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 all the stupidity that comes out of our mouth, and we ain't famous yet. <laughs> we're not rich, dude. <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> if we were rich and saying stupid stuff, we'd be everywhere. Right now, but, you know. <laughs> I mean, we, I see a lot of stupid stuff. <laughs> but we're not rich. We're not rich. Yeah, what's up with that? We're not rich. You know what I mean? We're being oppressed. Like yeah, you, said. you know. <laughs> yeah, and you know what I mean. It knows no color. <laughs> You kidding? If we had the money, we probably could have gotten on some fancy station years ago. Yeah, yeah, like, you know what I mean. Ooh, that's we could uh, probably get some money out. That's of it. so 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 daughter. Uh-huh. We could give her a job up here in uh on the View or a uh, Good Morning America yeah. or one of them thing and thing because we good looking. It's not like we ugly or nothing, you know. You know what I'm saying and thing. <laughs> <laughs> So cute. <laughs> you know, I don't understand it. You know what I mean? But uh, I don't know, man. I, I actually like doing this, so yeah, it would be nice to make money. But you know, I'm having fun doing it, it so is, you know, it, it doesn't is. really fun, matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, but yeah, we we do we celebrate excess and. That, well, that goes. Uh, is that, is that well, why that, so many that, people always go man you're tall because they celebrate excess because of excessively t- excessively go. tall human yeah, beings? Yeah, exactly. Yes. Excess of whatever you want it to be. Oh man, <laughs> I'm gonna need some surgery to cut off some of these legs. Yeah, I don't want to be an excess. <laughs> I'll take a couple inches. I wouldn't mind if I was about six two. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, and thing. Let's be people, but uh, yeah. Well, and that and, and that kind of goes to something else that I I you know that you and I were talking about earlier. That I said that I wanted to talk about on here was just the money that we're funneling into sports in this country. You know, I mean, obviously we get to see we get to see the contract of everybody yeah. who gets signed, whether it's baseball, NBA, NHL, the NFL, probably even NASCAR. Although I don't pay attention to it. Um, we get to My see head is getting cold. soccer, soccer even, even the four, even even the European leagues. We get to see what somebody gets signed for, and the amount of dollars that are there, people are going, oh my goodness, and we watch them repeatedly do stupid things with their money and all that. And what are we doing? We're celebrating it, and then also, what are we doing at the same time? Oh, little Johnny, you better go learn how to play baseball because you saw what Mike Trout just got signed for. You know, I, I, I don't care that you can't throw a ball, that you that you don't even know what a ball looks like. You, you, you better go play baseball, you know. And I'm sure a lot of people have seen the video of the uh, parents that got in a fight after a seven-year-old, ba- seven-year-olds playing baseball that had a 13-year-old umpire. Now, luckily, at least it looked like they weren't fighting the 13-year-old umpire. But <clears throat> the fact that they're fighting... At a game for kids, they're kids, you know, and it's like 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 a friend of mine said. Each parent thinks that they have the next Mike Trout when their kid's seven, and they're going straight into warrior mode. Yeah, you know what I mean. And which and and, and then well, they go, well, why is my kid beating up that other kid? Well, but you know, when you hear some of the things that fans and parents say, no wonder this is where their kids learn it from as well and they might do something stupid on the field meanwhile because you got 
dipsy doodle over here behind the backstop yeah. saying something dumb. You know, screaming obscenities at the umpire, screaming obscenities at the other coach, screaming obscenities at the other kids. No, no, we see a lot of men fighting, but them soccer moms are did, vicious. Did boy. you see in that video this one woman that went? Okay, there was the dude who got just drilled. Straight, yeah. yeah, and was laying on the yeah. ground. And a woman went up and went after the dude who punched him. You know, she went swinging after him. You know, so it, it's not just guys. No, it's, I mean, it's parents. I've seen soccer moms go after referees and stuff, you know, because yeah. their kids just got bumped and fell over. And it's like, he's been pushing kids down the whole game. <laughs> because your kids can't play soccer. That's what, <laughs> that's what the deal is. You better pay money to send them to another academy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, they, they, but, they don't have the skill set. <laughs> I mean, the, th the things that I've Stick heard. Stick with baseball. Because, okay, here, here's an example. <laughs> I heard that. Uh, here's 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 an example. Oh, of, I'm bullying them. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Here's an example of just stupidity that gets yelled. Okay, years ago we had a player on our team. You remember Rachel Sophie? And okay, her mouth could get kind of loud. You could hear her from a ways off. Oh, right? oh yeah, yeah. You see, I, I, for a minute, them like Sophie. I, I, I forgot because I'm I'm so used to her married oh, name. Oh, married name, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, she I, she was one of those players that when she's in the dugout, the mouth is always going, and it's because she, you know, she's into it, but she also knows that it's eating on the nerves of the other team. So much in the same way that you have people who trash talk. You know, yeah. you got basketball players that'll trash talk you up and down the court. You'll see it all the time. You know, a football player when a receiver and a corner line up next to each other. You see the mouths already going before the play yeah. even starts. Trash talk. So anyway, we were playing in Tulsa, which I'm already not a fan of. I'm sorry, I'm going to say it. Not a fan of that school anyway. A couple times that we went there for the conference tournament, there are people other than the one who was the who was the guy in charge of broadcasting. I'm sorry, I wish I could remember his name, because he was the only person that was there who was any kind of helpful whatsoever. Everybody else, it seemed like you were trying to ask for a million diamonds when I was like, "Can I just have a chair so I can sit at this table? Then I, this table that you have out for us to call games, can I just have a chair?" <sighs> Yeah, I'll go find you one. Thank you, appreciate it. But uh, so we so we were at a game in Tulsa. Uh, I'm trying to remember what year this was. See, we were at Tulsa in the odd years, so this probably would have been 07. 2007 probably. And so she's in the dugout, you know, occasionally mouth is going, and I'm sitting behind home plate having to having to film the game because they didn't believe in having any kind of outlets anywhere in the outfield for power. Um, so I'm sitting behind home plate. So unfortunately I'm around all the fans and um, there are the, there are these two fans sitting next to me, Tulsa fans. And one of them just goes, Oh my God, does that girl ever shut up? And I said, no, you might as well get used to it. This is going to be going on all game long. And then a little bit later he goes, you know what? I'm sick of this. I really just wish that, you know, even though I know it'd be an error for us, I just wish that one of our players would just throw the ball into the dugout and hit her in the face and just, just take her out. And I looked at him and I said, really? I go, boy, that's a mature and intelligent response to somebody who's just having fun and talking and during a game? Really? That's the route you're going to go? You're going to want your own team to have an error. And throw the ball into the dugout and hit somebody in the face because you can't stand her. Really? And then after I said that, then the next thing I hear in a very low voice, better watch yourself on the way to the bus. <laughs> I turned my camera on him. I said, say it again. I, got, I said, I've already got your voice. I just need your face. Say it again. And he just sat there glaring at me. And I and and I so I turned the camera back around and I said, "Look, buddy, you want to threaten somebody?" I said, "At least pick the right vehicle." I said, "We flew here, so we came in vans." But he just sat there, just. Meh. Well, then I ended up finding out whose parents they were, their starting pitcher, who was a bit of a snot herself, because at one point in in this this is all happening in the same game. At one point. Tulsa's head coach, John Bargfeld, 
I, correction, there were two people at Tulsa who were helpful. John Barkfell was a class act, their head coach. He just stepped down recently. But he wanted the starting pitcher to intentionally walk Rachel Folden. Four-time All-American Rachel Folden, who's been mashing home runs and hitting doubles, and there's people on base, and he was like, look, I don't want to deal with her. Just walk her. Well, she didn't want to walk her. First pitch was actually a strike, so he calls time and walks back out there. Or, or what, he, had, he hadn't walked out there yet. But So he calls time and he walks out there and basically tells her, look, I told you to intentionally walk her. You will intentionally walk her. So he goes back to the dugout. Finally, she intentionally walks Folden. Folden takes first, so now I think we have two people on base. Samantha Rodriguez comes up, who has one of the prettiest swings I've ever, I've ever seen. Starting pitcher, she funnels it right down the middle of the plate. And Sam sends it like 300-plus feet. I mean, just gone. And I've got it all on camera. After Sam hits this bomb, starting pitcher looks back at her dugout, at her coach, and goes, meh. She didn't want to intentionally walk. She didn't care what her coach said. So you know what? Fine. I'll put this one right down the middle. See, we were talking about it on the on the plane ride back, and Sam, I'm going to edit what she said because because <laughs> Sam had a tendency to just kind of you know cuss words come out. She she Sam just basically said, "Hey, she want to throw it down." She's like, "She want pipe it down the middle? I don't care. I'll take it." You know, but it, and and that's who I found out I was sitting next to. It was her parents. I'm like, well, no wonder this kid's a snot. Yeah. So are they? See, you know, like, oh my. God. I'm not saying we didn't have a. Oh, 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 well, we've oh, seen in other incident, countries, you know, in, incidents, you know what I mean? Who have been yeah. murdered in the parking lot. <laughs> when I was in school, we would go to other parishes. We don't have states. We have parishes and play. And I remember uh, my school, Wesley College, was one of the best netball college schools, you know, in the country. All right. And we went to play a, a, a school in the countryside. And... Uh, we beat them like, you know, no business, you know what I mean? Mm. So then once one, one we know we win, everybody's running for the buses. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, them buses are hard to get into because they're minivans, <laughs> pretty much. And I remember this girl lean out and uh, as you're as you driving off, she thought she was safe. She leaned out and go, boo! <laughs> Somebody jumped and slapped. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But the, the mean, thing about it, it we, we actually made, we laughed about it. Mm. I, I know here, you know what I mean. Stop the bus, you know, you know whatever. But you know, we kind of laughed at it. And of course, there was some back in the day. I don't know if they still do it, but there are some places you go to play a soccer match, and if you win, you better run because you're gonna lose the fight. <laughs> I mean, it was a tradition. Well, and, I, it, and that's a stupid tradition. I, I don't understand. And that. nobody got hurt or that. You might get whipped with a with a with a, with, with, with a, a, a thin tree branch or something. It's not like anybody getting uh, planast with a cutlass or something like that. But uh, you know, nobody's gonna like sit on you and beat you to a pulp mm. and stomp on your head which or nothing is, which like is what that. They'll do here. Uh, but you yeah. know, but I never see parents fight over anything. I don't know how it is now because I haven't been there in a yeah. while. But I've never seen parents not. fight over their kids at games. You know, yeah. I mean, I've seen people get angry and I've seen referees <laughs> get threatened and stuff like that. But it's always more funny than it is well, dangerous because you yeah. know it, somebody's going to step in and say no nah, you ain't hitting the referee well and the things that i've heard okay i, I used to be a uh, intramural referee here at, at marshall and I, I even stopped doing that because even just the little extra pay that i was getting doing that wasn't worth the crap that you dealt with from the players I mean, and you know, one of one. Sorry, I'm yawning a lot. <laughs> one, one of one of my favorite things that uh, I don't remember if, if if you were there this one day in Gullickson, but after, you know, some guys they didn't fight, but after they got in a nasty argument after a pickup game, this one dude goes, "Man, it's like this is pickup ball." He said, "There's no scouts sitting up in the stands watching you guys, man. Come on, we're just here to play ball." Intramural, same thing. It's like, I'm sorry, but the college coaches are not going, you know what, I'm going to go watch the intramurals to see which kid in flag football I need to sign to the football team. Yeah. You know, or whatever. I mean, it, it, no, it's not happening. And But I broke up fights in flag football. Ben's on there. What's up, Ben? Um, but I broke up fights in flag football. I broke up fights in basketball. I broke up fights in soccer. 
you know, volleyball is the only one I didn't have to break up a fight in. And it's just, it's, it's so stupid to me. I had, there, there was, there was a guy who played football here and was a strength coach here. And while he was a strength coach here, he was on a flag football team. And this was the championship game. And his team was already winning by, I think, two touchdowns. And there was under two minutes to go. And the quarterback for the other team takes off running. And he runs out of bounds to stop the clock. Right? Okay, makes sense. Well, this dude, who's the strength coach, comes over and drills him. Four steps. I'm not kidding. Four steps out of bounds. And I threw the flag. And he came up and threatened me. The guy who hit him, now granted, remind you, this is a flag football game, so there's already no hitting. Two, even if this was tackle football, he was four steps out of bounds. I mean, he was out of bounds, slowing down, and boom, just lays him out. So even in a, even in a tackle football game, flag comes out. He came over and started threatening me. And I had to put my hand out and be like, look, first of all, you're not even supposed to be hitting. Second of all, take one more step and I'll eject you. I'm like, really? I mean, you're going to come threaten me? I'm, I'm the ref. You just did something that is completely out of the rules. And you're going to come threaten me. Now, the guy hit, what did he do? He just... He got up and he went back knowing that, hey, man, we just got an extra 15 yards. Fantastic. Yeah. He's trying to go score. He's going, I don't care if there's only a minute and a half left. We're down by two touchdowns. I'm trying to do whatever I can. See, that's why I... He, that's he, didn't, why... Try to, he didn't try to go fight him. He got up off the ground. I was like, <laughs> See, that, 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 that's why I stopped playing well, pickup basketball. Well, you, and, and you were also there the day of the big soccer fight. Yeah. You know, when we when we had to separate those guys, you know, frat boy can't take it that, that the uh, five foot two guy from another country can steal the ball from him without touching him. Yeah. So what happens when the one referee blows the whistle to say the game's over? Just takes him down to the ground and starts just wailing away. And I've got to go into a dead sprint run all the way down the field to try and break that up. Before the football players got over there. <laughs> Thank goodness. <laughs> I don't want to have to separate Because them the football out either. Person's like, is he beating on that brother for nothing? <laughs> I know. And, and then the big dudes start walking over there real quick. I was like, whoa, here well, we and go. Then, and then we get it. We get it all separated and finished. And then here are these two guys from the frat boy team. I'm sorry, frat boys were the biggest pain in my pizzazz when I had when I was in, when I was a ref. But they start walking over, and. Um, My mom said, way to go. Proud of you. <laughs> But uh, so, I mean, these two, these two guys start walking over who are clearly not dressed to play ball because they're still wearing their preppy best, you know, so they're obviously not there to play soccer. And they come pick on the dude that I'm talking to who's asking me about, you know, hey, how's this going to get settled out? You know, I mean, they jumped us and, and he's only about maybe 5'4", and these two guys are at least 6'4". And they come walking up, and they start to try and pick a fight with him. And so I've got to, now I've got to get them out of there. I'm like, this is so stupid. And when I, when I went to the guy that was the head of intramurals, and I, when I told him, I was like, look, you know, I'm, I'm sorry, but I can't do this anymore. This is just so stupid. He, he told me, he's like, he goes, he goes are, are you sure? Are you serious? He goes, because you are one of my best refs. He goes, you are one of my best game managers. And I said, And I'm sick and tired of managing all these babies. You know, like, I, I'm tired of breaking up fights. I'm tired of getting screamed at when somebody thinks I missed a call. Now, I will say there were probably some times I missed a call. There's no video review for me to go back on and go, ooh, yeah, missed that one. But, okay, there, there was a basketball game. These two guys collided. Now... One, clearly, you could tell, was just going to go hit the other guy. And so, obviously, I blow the whistle. I go over to the scorer's table to call the foul. Now, they were both wearing the same number. Like they, I, I forget what number it was, but let's say they were both wearing number four. But obviously, they've got different colored jerseys on. Now, what we were told is that you were supposed to go up to the scorer's table and say, like, foul on number four, blue. You're supposed to give the number first. 
so I walk, I blow the whistle, I go over to the scores table, and I go, foul on number four, and the guy who got level goes, what? And he starts taking three steps towards me. I put my hand out to the side, and I went, blue, and he's wearing red. And he went, oh, I said, easy. I was like, give me a second. I said, I've got to finish the call, okay? I said, you guys are wearing the same number. Yeah. But, I mean, he was going to attack me if I called the foul on him. This is an intramural game, you know, and, and like I said, and, and, the, and the things that I've heard during collegiate softball games, I mean, I just, like, my God. And then obviously, too, now being in Sports Info, the other games that you work, sitting down courtside during a basketball game. I mean, there are some times I wish I could turn around to you, to some of our fans here at Marshall and go, you're done. Yeah. I'm going to put a muzzle on you. You're done. You you really just need to stop talking. I was watching YouTube and the, the chants they chant at people when they're trying to do stuff like they'd find the softest spot or you know something that's that's really going to get to them like you know it's a, they, they, somebody had trouble with drugs you know yep. you are an addict clap, yeah clap, oh clap, yeah clap, clap, oh yeah you know, and they, they, they just say stuff fan, like that yeah fans just they they think they can say whatever they want and and like I've said I understand trash talk but there's a point where you cross the line hey they could say hey freedom of speech I don't have to be politically correct but it's just well and then they wonder why fights start. Yeah. You know, when players suddenly lose their edge, and then, of course, everybody's got to say, oh, players have to keep themselves under control. And like, well, somebody. Yeah, but you know what? Fans have got to keep themselves under control, too. I saw a fight almost break, break out between, like, some kind of a big shot from Toronto. There's an African guy and a cop after they won the. Uh... Oh, no, that was the GM. Yeah. That was the general manager. And what was that about? Well, the cop didn't recognize him. The GM wanted to get on the court. Okay, because they were at Golden State. Yeah. So the GM wanted to get on the court to celebrate. And I don't know if he wasn't wearing his credential, it was hidden, whatever it was, but the cop didn't recognize him. Okay. Cop's probably not going to know everybody involved with the Toronto Raptors. But, you know, so instead of trying to prove who he was, he just got angry, obscenities. And I can't remember if he actually punched him or what. Or no, he didn't. Him, or, he, I, or he pushed him. He I did. Think. He did something, and then his te- uh, the, the guys on his team came and got him. Yeah. Well, they had to come and get him. Yeah. But but that same thing. It's like instead of. Do calmly, you know who I am? Yeah, instead of calmly going, <laughs> "Hey, I'm sorry. I'm the Rap- I'm the Raptors general manager," and oh shoot, where's my credential? Hey, let me try and grab one of my guys over here. Hey, come here. Please tell him this is okay. That's you. You know. Whatever. Okay, I didn't but, know. I didn't know exactly what happened. Oh no! He, yeah, he was the general manager. Well, I know. Like, who, yeah. I know he was a big shot, but yeah. I didn't know that they mistook that he wasn't the who he was or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, like I said, I, I can completely understand a cop not knowing everybody involved with the team. You know, they're being told, "Hey, don't let people rush the floor when this game is over." Yeah. Here comes somebody trying to rush the floor. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa! Excuse me. And you know, I have a rant to go on about basketball. Uh oh. Okay. Here we go. What's up with this stuff? Here comes this ball ball kid playing the game I used to play, <laughs> and now he's go a lottery pick. When I was no, playing was, like that, he was drafted like forty fourth overall. Oh, that's not a lottery pick. He went in the second round. Oh, they said he was going to be a lottery pick. I didn't know he went in the second you round. Who got many, him? Who know, got him? I don't remember. But you know how many people uh, Nuggets maybe. You know how many people they put that grade on? Oh, you'll be a lottery pick. Yeah. When I think there's only like maybe ten lottery picks. Yeah. You well, you, well, you uh, can you can essentially have enough grades that somebody said, Oh, you're gonna be a lottery pick and it's like, Okay. Okay, there was another supposed lottery pick. Oh, you see you see they're still hating. There was another one. They're still hitting on the, the, the ball handling seven footer. They're still <laughs> hitting on the ball handling seven footer. <laughs> Uh, because Shaq even said that he would uh, he would have uh, uh, picked him over Zion Williamson because Zion Williamson is a dunker. You know, a ball, ball can handle the ball. You know, the three pointer. You know, the, 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 Shaq the, cracks me up. Dude, you know what I mean? Uh, he ain't doing nothing I didn't do back in the day. But no, you wanted to put my skinny butt down there so people like Shaq could break my jaw. <laughs> Make even skinnier because now you really can't eat. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you know, yeah, you want to put me down there? I got beat up so bad down there. It's like, okay, I quit. 
And didn't and didn't you say that your coach even got mad at you when you stepped out and you were hitting long jumpers over the other okay. guy? Yeah. And you're like, but I'm yeah, scoring, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I could have played down there. I had a sweet hook shot, but, you know, I, I didn't want to get beat up to just do a hook well, shot. There is a point when you're giving up basically double your own body weight to somebody. You know, <laughs> yeah, I am 150 pounds soaking wet. And this dude is like this 302 tall, pounds, you know what I mean? Fifty pounds this tall. This dude is like 300 pounds, and bam, bam, bam. It's like, Lord, getting hit by a Mack truck for, <laughs> for, what, 15 minutes? And not wearing pads either. You know? Yeah. I needed a helmet there. <laughs> and now here comes all these seven-footers, you know, dribbling and then oh, hitting yeah, three-pointers. Oh, yeah. uh, you, know, you told me I couldn't do that thing I back mean, in the I day. Mean, I mean, look at Kevin Durant. Okay, yeah. He's, he's just under seven. But he's still that height that normally would have been putting him down low in the, in the You back, know what I mean? In the post. Man, should have been born in the 90s. No, no, I should have been born in the early 2000s. That would have been a lottery pick for sure. <laughs> no millennial over here. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of frustrating to see that. <laughs> You would have. You better make sure that your family had some money to put you on an AAU team. Cause Not because back cause, then, cause back that, then. No, back I'm talking then? about now. Oh no. I'm talking about now. If you wanted to be born in the early 2000s and be a millennial, your family better have had money. No, nah, because you on an I, AAU I would have been. Team. I would have been so good. It wouldn't have matter. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's another thing we're doing with sports in this country. You better have money if you want to play and get noticed to go to uh, college, even. Well, ball, better ball, be on a travel ball, ball team. Better be on academy. You better be. You know. Ball, ball didn't have any money. Somehow they got him on the. Because I know yeah. he was. I know he was obviously playing for. Yeah. Some, you know. Because his dad pretty much donated all the money to the yeah, Sudan. I know, I know. Yeah. You know his grandfather was like seven five, and he's got like all these people are like way over seven feet in his family. Jesus. It's a, it's a certain tribe in Sudan that's that, that, that that's like that, like everybody's over six feet, including the women. Huh, maybe I might find a wife down there. <laughs> if I like tall women. I don't like tall women that much. I was going to say, you already had a kid that reached 6'8". So. Yeah. yeah. You go find a wife down there that's about 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and <laughs> your son's going to be 18 and taller than you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want that. I wanted to be, you know, the tallest. <laughs> I didn't want competition. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I watch him play, and I'm like, man, look at him handle the ball. You know, I would have said he was, so he probably watched an uh, old film of me, but there's no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. You know what I mean? Because I remember playing and, and pick up games and stealing the ball from like five, seven point guard and they go, oh, you learned to do that. Because that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I just long reach You for know a what reason. I mean? Yeah, you know what I mean? And being as small as, 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 as skinny as I was, I was quick because, yeah. you know, I didn't have a lot of weight to carry. Mm-hmm. And now everybody's doing it. I really wish I could have seen you play ball. I, I, okay, let me take that back. I wish I could have seen you play ball on the island when you were talking about just when it was fun. Yeah. You know? It was so much fun, man. I wish I could have seen you play ball back I mean, then. I used to feel so good floating and dunking and stuff like that. Because even I've just watched you shoot. You know? Like that one time I was like, here, old man, let me show you how to shoot. Hit two out of five. But then again, give the ball back to him and swish, swish, yeah. <laughs> swish, swish. The culture, the culture. There. Did you see? Uh, and I know we're talking sports, but mm-hmm. still, Chris Paul. What's his name? No, 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 no. The dude that's with Houston, the point guard. Well, you got Chris Paul or James Harden. Okay, Chris Paul said, yeah. "I cannot play with James Harden anymore. <laughs> yeah. I want to be traded." You know, and they hate each other and blah blah blah. Yeah. Brothers, brothers, stop it. James Harden is a little bit of a ball hog. I will say that. Yeah, there's quite a few of those there. Yeah. Westbrook, Westbrook is one too. A little bit. And that's the bad thing about playing in a, a down low, because all the ball hogs are up there, yeah, you know. I and know. they think you, you can just. Yeah. Hope, I mean, yeah, yeah. They, they, they're chucking it up and they expect you. You, you, you're seven foot tall. Go get the rebound, man. You know, go get the rebound, dude. You looking good, yeah. and I'm looking like a utility player. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean. 
Shaq would have been almost useless if somebody didn't want to pass him the ball. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, yeah, other than, yeah. Other than gr- occasionally grabbing a rebound. You I mean, but you see, Shaq would move people and score. No, I know, yeah. no, but I'm you saying, know what I mean. I couldn't move since, anybody. You know, but I'm saying, but since you're not the point guard <laughs> yeah. down there, yeah, you're not bringing the ball up the court. Yeah. So if somebody doesn't give you the ball, yeah. you're kind of just taking up space. Yeah. You so know even what I mean? if you're as big as Shaq, you're useless if somebody won't give you the ball. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I could have played a two guard, maybe not a point guard. I could be a two guard <laughs> or a small forward or a big forward, small yeah. forward type of thing. You know, yeah. instead, no, you're the center. You know, you just gotta put on muscle and weight. <laughs> I don't want to put on muscle and weight. You know what I mean? I just want to play ball. Yeah. But it just wasn't fun, dude. Yeah. And you remember you were talking about how. People wanted the kids to play ball and make the money, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You remember when you told some of the some people that uh, I didn't like it, so I quit, and they said, but he could have been rich. Oh, yeah. That, that, that totally blows their mind when I say that he wasn't having fun. Oh, but, they, but he could have been, but he wasn't having fun. Yeah. He didn't like the game anymore. Yeah. I, let me be rich and miserable. How many rich and miserable people end up dying? Young. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, thank you. You know what I mean? The only thing that won't kill me is old age. You see how healthy I, mean, I, I eat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, heck, you, you know, you probably, you, you know, probably would have gone to the NBA and the way that, you know, your attitude was at the time about the game, maybe you only made it two years. Yeah. And I'm saying two years because you probably would have been like, well, the money's kind of good. I'll try and still at least yeah. make it a second yeah. year. And I know this and, is going. And I could definitely see you going. Man, and I know it. this is going to make a lot of people go. What is he talking about? But you know what? I wasn't very comfortable with all them girls chasing me around. Mm. That was not comfortable, at all. Whoop whoop. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, when you go to the pros, don't forget me. I don't even know you now. Well, I would say I don't. I, for you, I don't even know your name, but you wouldn't know their name anyway. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Who is you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had to see that so because I said, "Who are you?" They'd go, "Well, okay, man, I don't want you no he more. You're not one of us." English. But uh, yeah, but, that that was really uncomfortable, you know, walking around and you got all these girls around you, and it's like, why are you here? What do you want? Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm being the nice person that I am. You know, I know some of the ball players will, and they use the B word, get the yeah, away from me. Yeah. And I, I just can't do that stuff. You, you know, know? It's funny. Okay, you and I were talking about this when we were playing music. When I was in high school, if you were on a team, but you didn't play, but you still had the jersey, but you didn't play, the girls weren't coming after you. Yeah. You would get made fun of mercilessly. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, I don't care if you're on the team, man. You suck. You don't play. Yeah. You know, like, I don't know why coach keeps you around. I mean, I saw people get, I didn't play, but I saw people get made fun of just mercilessly. I was like, man, this is your teammate. Bless you. I could see that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sneezing, man. I wasn't dabbing. Yeah, right. That's why that other arm came out the side there. Okay. But, I mean, I would see guys, you know, just getting made fun of so badly, even though they were on a team and they, you know, he'd say, here's your teammate, but they weren't playing. I come here to Marshall, and I see the 10th string running back who you know is never going to see the field unless they can figure out how to play special teams. And girls are draped all over them. Yeah. You know, here's, here's, the, here's the safety who – Appeared in one game in four years, and girls are all over them. But but, like, but you see that that but that's the thing though. That's the thing. I didn't play much. I sat the bench, and there they were. Well, that's what I'm saying. At college, like okay, in high school, didn't matter if if you sat the bench, you got no love. From what I was seeing, you got no. You love. You get to college. You get to college and you sit the bench, and oh my. god. God, those women were all over them. Well, you know, you know what? <laughs> you know, hang on, before you go there, friend of mine, Brandon. I remember when he and his uh, when he and his girlfriend broke up. I somebody asked him. It might have been me. I can't remember if I asked him this or not. I said, "Man, you got a problem seeing her with you know all these football players?" He goes, "Nah, man, she can't even get with the starters." <laughs> I was like, "She was going around with all the eight string running back, you know, and twelve string cornerback." But but but, but, but you know why all those girls are all around them? 
they're the gateway, bro. The gateway players. <laughs> You know Eventually, what I mean? the starter is going to go, uh-huh. I'll take that one. Yeah. yeah Marijuana is the gateway drug, and yeah. the bench warmers are the gateway, the gateway, the gateway gate, guys. Yeah. <laughs> the ga- uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to the gateway brothers. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, you know. So, so, so you know, now, now, now that I've looked at it that way, I feel kind of good. You know what I mean? I was just the gateway brother. <laughs> They weren't coming after me. And you know what's funny is you put the stiff arm out there, man. So you weren't even a gateway for them. You know? You 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 were a closed gate. Yeah. Just look at me at the gates of hell. (laughs) You don't want to come here. (laughs) Sorry, come back later. (laughs) You know what I mean? Fire go burn you down. (laughs) Other things going to burn you up there, but it's (laughs) fire. <laughs> but Son yeah, I really did. I didn't play that much. I mean, you yeah. know, because I red shot one semester and the next semester I was on, I was out there. But I, you know, I, I just I didn't well, play you much. Pl- you, you didn't play much because your coach didn't know how to use you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Here, it got I've so, got this tall I guy mean, that can handle the ball and shoot threes. Download you I, I, I got I, I, people used to say we. They used to call me Big A. We want Big A. The crowd yeah. used to start screaming that, and that was yeah. kind of strange. Just like, what is going on here? You know what I mean? Why are you screaming that? Shh! Like, I didn't really want to play. <laughs> I did. Oh man! Oh man! I need to get some tissue. He's having allergy problems over here. He has to keep ducking to the side to go sneeze over yeah, there. You don't. You don't want to see me. Uh, clean and snort out my nose, you know what I mean? But, uh, but uh, yeah, you know, uh, it's kind of sad how it is, though, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, where I'm from, nerds got girls, too, because the nerds are the ones that's going to be the doctors, the lawyers, the teachers, the uh, the poly tricksters, you know? Nope. You know what I'm saying, Ante? <laughs> and like I always tell, if you, if you see the stuff I put up uh, there, yeah, you're going to talk about how, you know, this guy's a good uh, athlete, but you're also going to talk about this guy, the other guy, the nerdy guy is a good student. You know, you see, they get they, somebody just got a little award and so well, not a little award, a big award and stuff. You know, for you know, all right. I don't know if they do they do that here. Like, if somebody's an academic success. Oh yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, is he going to get to go to the White House like the national championship team? No. Oh okay. No. But I mean, they they definitely still have awards for that. Yeah, but because I mean, but, but, I mean but, you okay, yeah. you can have, and this this is speaking just from softball because this is mostly what I deal with. You've got um, obviously there's a conference all academic team. Yeah. Um, there's the COSIDA all you yeah. know all academic teams, which is just SIDs voting yeah. on these. You know, obviously we can nominate them and then yeah. they vote. Um, there's the uh, obviously conf- uh, conference USA commissioners honor roll. There's the academic medalists. If you have yeah. a GPA of three seven five or higher, but but overall, nobody really ever hears about it in the oh, news. No, well, well, we put it out all the yeah. time. It's not our fault that the news didn't want to put it out. And then there's also the NFCA, um, that if you have a certain GPA, you're automatically I think it's a three five, you're automatically an NFCA All America Scholar Athlete. Yeah. So. Um, you mean I mean they don't even let them go to the White House and get Big Macs and prehistoric fries. <laughs> They're too smart for that. They don't want that stuff. <laughs> because, you know, uh, those fries, man, they, 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 they last forever, you know. They, they like mummified. <laughs> they will just sit for sure days, taste like they for years forever. and years and years, you know what I mean? <laughs> and not, not spoil. <laughs> they don't taste like they last forever, I will say that. But, uh, yeah, you know, I don't know, man. We, we we sort of beat around a lot here tonight, but you we know do, we do that. Sometimes that sometimes, makes some of the better you know shows. I mean? yeah. You know, it's not a bad idea to you know. Hopefully, you guys enjoy us babbling a little bit and take. Yeah, you know, but yeah, yeah. We should get back to some music. Yeah, we'll have some music take, coming know? up. Um, I'm gonna start it off with K. John on the ocean, one of my favorite songs. Yeah. And uh, so remember, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry for those of you tuning in on Facebook Live as he goes to exit with another nasal problem. If, if you want to tune in with the music, you got to check us out, www.marshall.edu slash WMUL. Uh, you can check out with the music for the last hour of the show. Uh, so, yeah, Facebook Live, sorry, we'll have to shut you all off. So I also remember the podcast, the new episode, and we did two recordings, uh, 
mm-hmm. this uh, this uh, past week. One, we have uh, Kian Finley, and uh, he talked about uh, democratic socialism and mm-hmm. the different facets of socialism. Also, he talked about the uh, automaton or automation or whatever. Auto, 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 yeah, basically robots taking, uh, over, taking jobs. over jobs and, and, and stuff like that. That's a good one. And then the next one that we recorded, uh, we had a, a young lady called, her name is uh, Amy, Amy Maynard. <laughs> And uh, she talked about the grassroots movement that she started here in West Virginia. Uh, and uh, I know our stuff is like all over the place, all over the country and stuff. But maybe that grassroots movement that she started is something that everybody could, you know, do in their small community. Mm-hmm. And she talked about using social media, blah, 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 you know, all that good stuff. So that one is going to be not this Monday on the podcast, but the next Monday. And we're going to have some more guests. I would like to get a reasonable conservative <laughs> kind of like i'm getting reasonable liberals say, you gotta to find reasonable li- liberals too. you know what i mean <laughs> I, I, amy's a liberal she's yeah. a reasonable liberal yeah. you know what i mean she wants everybody to be informed and stuff yeah. like that so they know what's going on mm-hmm. i want to get a reasonable conservative to come and talk not one that goes well <laughs> lip tards. I don't, we ain't trying to have that yeah you know and, and we're not gonna give them the questions like gotcha or nothing like that mm-hmm. we're gonna just let them say what they say Pass the information on. You take it with what you know, whatever you mm-hmm. want it to be. That's how we're gonna if do it. If they start you know to go I mean? too stupid, we'll cut them off. And also, this friend of mine is probably quite listening. It's a a lady that I met at my job, and she taught me how to do the Charleston. You know what I mean? She taught me how to do the little steps and take. We were dancing in the middle of uh, the grocery store. <laughs> And I, right. I told her I was going to say that on the radio, yeah. So, yeah, you know, so there you go. If you're listening, she taught me how to do the Charleston, and she talked about her sisters doing rowing 20s dances and stuff, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that was that. You see, that's the thing, man. We need to start listening to older, older people and stuff like that and we'll listen to this too. We don't do that much anymore. We want them to uh, be shut old and up shut up. Yeah. You know shut what up I mean? Shut young people. You know what I mean? Just like they want people to shut up and play ball or yeah. you know, uh, shut up and pick up the garbage or whatever. Yeah. But you know, so yeah. We are kind to and